Hey, Shalom, Bakim, Shalom. First thing before and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakabadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of the great millstone. Blessings and salutations to the whole elect. It was in the gospel of Rod, looking up the standard of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Uh, real quick, man, this is a response to this guy, Vocal Malone, aka Heyman Malone. <laughs> okay. Um, we believe he's Haman in the reincarnation because if you go into the book of, uh, I believe it was the book of, uh, I think it was Esther or Ruth, if I'm not mistaken. But um, basically, you had this guy Haman that had a, basically, uh, he had it out for the Jews, okay? And he became second in the command. And I believe it was uh, uh, the, uh, the Persian king, if I'm not mistaken. Salaki, if I'm off on that. But uh, he basically came up in ranks within an empire. And his whole conspiracy was to destroy the Hebrew Israelites, okay, because Haman was in fact of Edomite descent, okay, and if you go into the history of the Babylonians and the Persians of the Medes and even the Greeks, okay, which the Greeks were Edomites, okay, which were originally Japhites, but Esau assumed the identity as other nations, according to Psalms 49.11, but um, long story short, Esau has always had it out. For the Israelites, okay, ever since he was supplanted of the birthright. And even beyond then, because they come in that spirit of Cain. Fast forward to 2022, you got this guy by the name of Vocab that's taking on the same similar characteristics as this guy Haman, the Agadite, okay, because we understand that things are reincarnated through the scriptures, okay? Empires, people, or spirits, as you want to call them, mindsets, all sorts of things are pretty much recycled. That's why the scriptures say there's nothing new under the sun. You see, but now you got this big tirade about how the Edomites are done away with, how they've been destroyed. Like we've had this argument before. We've we've done videos on this. And quite personally, I'm tired of responding to this guy. I'm actually tired of him, but I understand we have a duty to defend the gospel. Okay, so more brothers are getting hands on deck with defending the gospel and, and shutting down this folly once and for all because his whole focus is to focus on the Hebrew Israelites, man. Okay, and he's trying to lump us up with domestic terrorism and Muslims. Okay, he's calling us one and the same in a roundabout way. But you will never see him going up against these Catholic priests. You will never see him going into prophecy or eschatology, which is the study of end times. You never see him going into uh, 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 men killing one another, the, the, the Momo agenda. You know, and we got to say it that way because we're pretty much shadow banned on YouTube. Okay, but this guy will never go into all the atrocities that's happening in the planet Earth. But he focused his thing on the Hebrew Israelites. And if his followers were smart enough to, to, to know or put two and two together, if they had two brain cells to rub together, they would say, well, these Hebrew Israelite guys must have the truth because why is he attacking them so hard? Okay? He's not even really going after the unconscious or the black consciousness community. He's at the Hebrew Israelites. Why is that? Out of all the different denominations of Christianity in the world and all the so-called biblical-based beliefs, this guy's hell bent on trying to debunk the Hebrew Israelites and you're doing a miserable job, man. Okay, because for one thing, you don't know history. And the reason why you're going against us so hard is because you're confounded. Okay, and in fact, you are an Edomite, man. Okay, and I believe you are an Amalekite. Now, look up the Sephardic Jews or look up the Khazari Empire and do your research on that and find out that they was converted over to Judaism during the 7th to 10th, through the 7th, 7th all the way through the 10th um, centuries, man. Okay, a lot of them were Ottoman Turks. And if you understand the history of the Ottoman Turks and you understand that Esau had daughters with Ishmael, that's the reason why they have like an Arab type hue to them, but they were still Edomites. Then you will understand the history of the Khazarian Empire and the Ottoman Empire and know that those are your people and that the so-called Jews of today are not the people. Okay, but your own devils, your own, your own kinsmen tells you that the modern day Jews are Edomites, man. Okay, or the modern day Jewish people are Edomites. And you can find that in your books. Matter of fact, you can look up the book Who Was Esau Edom? Okay, or going into the serpent of the uh, the blood. I think it was a book called The Seed of the Serpent. I believe the 13 bloodlines of the elites or something like that. And they all trace back to Esau Edom. And you can find that in a book of uh who is Esau Edom. You see, so you 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 you're going you man, look, dog. You're miserable, okay, and we know that you're set up by the by the by the by the peoples. Uh, we know that you are you're you're desperate at your attempt to try to debunk us because you hurt, and you're set up. 
you are sent bro okay you are sent you are financed by the, by some type of group okay by some type of el elitist group or some type of lower level illuminaries and they're sending you on a voyage man okay so anyway let's listen to this madness There are no more ethnically distinct Edomites. They were destroyed numerous times over. The last time we even see one mention is Herod of Edomia. Edomia is the Greek way to say Edom. After that, we don't really see them pop up. We don't know where they were. They're gone. This is fulfilled. And their dwelling place in Petra, it was like a ghost town until archaeologists discovered it. And they said, oh, this sounds like biblical prophecy fulfilled. And it was. Okay, you are an idiot, man. You are a clown. For our thing, Petra, okay, if you go to Petra today, a modern a Petra, your home <laughs> you will see that the particular uh uh infrastructure the way that they built it up was pretty much the same way as downtown new york city downtown chicago the dc the stock exchange okay if you look at all these old coliseums you know you go into the gladiators you go into these particular football arenas you will understand that these are your people because what in the romans edomites and they call america rome 2.0 so if you understand the characteristics of your people and you understand how they built certain architecture structures, then you will know that your people are still around today. OK, but that's how you know that they're still around because you're trying so hard to debunk that they're not. And I'm going to ask you this. If they're not around today, then what happened to them? OK, when did Isaiah, the 34th chapter, come into play? When did Obadiah 1 and 18 come into play? You cannot show me or any brother in this faith. That you have any evidence of the Most High destroying Idumia, okay? And you want to go off some petrol scholarship about all oh, uh, it's desolate. You got people that visit uh, 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 Petra today, man. You got people that visit at tourist attractions. They take photos. People take selfies there, okay? Now, as far as inhabitants, no, because it was prophesied that your people was going to come to this side of the world and set up colonies. Why would they need to be there when they have the masses of the people on this side of the world? Okay, so come on, bro. You can't use that argument. Okay, but anyway, this is the book of Ecclesiastes 4 and 16. It says there is no end of all the people. Okay, so there's no end. You're still around. Okay, all 18 nations are still here today. And the only nation that's going to be eviscerated after they serve uh, servitude involuntarily because we're going to put you in slavery. Then uh, uh, your people are going to be pretty much destroyed. What happens to you after that? I mean, shit, who really knows? It was speculated that a few things will happen, but as far as biblical reference, the Most High is going to get you out of here. Okay, so this prophecy was written for uh, uh, at this time, but not even then, because it says there is no end of all the people. Even if all the people that have been before them, they also that come after should not rejoice in him. Surely this is also vanity and vexation of spirit. But I wanted to focus on there's no end of all people. You see? So, hey, man, you still around, buddy. Now, once again, Google uh, 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 Petra and then Google Washington, D.C. or New York Stock Exchange. And you're going to find out that everything is re resurfaced or pretty much reincarnated back into the earth, including your people. So the Herodians were not the last people. OK, think about it like, OK, you got a. Uh, Antipater the Idumean, you got the Herodian dynasty, okay, you got Pontius Pilate, but look, just look at this way, who was the last disciple that was to live and who was in power at that time, okay, look up Domitian Caesars, they were Edomites, man, that was harboring the control of the Roman Empire, so look that up, since you want to get all technical and say all oh, the Herodians, well, look up Domitian, okay, because you had certain Caesars, like Nero Caesars, you had Julius, uh, Augustus Caesar, Okay, you had different men that intercepted in their particular rule, but you had Domitian, I believe, that was like the one that ruled during the time of John the Apostle, when he was pretty much uh, uh, put on put on an island to, to get the revelations of Revelation, man. Okay, basically he was banished into a salt mine, so to speak, a, a island to die there, exile. And who was in power then? I believe it was Domitian Caesar's. Okay, so look that up. But anyway. Bringing out a little bit more evidence here because it's too many ways to cut you, bro. It says here, the Herodian dynasty was a royal dynasty of Idumean Edomite descent. See, Esau gets stupid. He tried to say the Edomites are the Arabs. See, he tried to say that based on the Ottoman Empire. But no, they're not Arabs. They're so-called white people. 
because uh, Salakia. So, so because if if Esau was Arabs, then who are the Ishmaelites? Okay, and if you battle a hard uh, a Muslim, or actually, uh, uh, I believe it was a what is it, the Shiite or the Sunni? I believe one of them is Elam and the other one is Ishmael. But if you go into one of those Arab countries and you ask them who's the descendants, they would tell you, "Look, man, we are descendants of Ishmael, one of the sons of uh, Abraham." Man, he would tell you that because Ishmael knows his history to a degree. So if you try to call Ishmael an Edomite, he's going to look at you like you're crazy. He's going to laugh at you because they understand parts of their history. So you can't say he's an Arab, okay? Even if you go and you speak to some of these Arabs in the bodegas and ask them who are they inside, they was, if you say, look, you're the descendants of Ishmael, they will agree with you, okay? Because they know. <laughs> so you've been exposed, man. You can't hide no more. You need to accept the fact that you are an Edomite, okay? And you're going to go in slavery. And it says here, who are the Edomites today? It says during the second century BC, the Edomites were forcibly converted to Judaism, okay? Which that they got different timelines. If you read into the Khazarian history, they got between the seventh and tenth uh, of century. Then you got some that say the sixth century. But it says during the second century uh, BC, the Edomites were forcibly converted to Judaism by the Hasmoneans, okay? If you look up, uh, what's his name? Um, John, uh, what's this guy's name of the Hasmonean dynasty? You got to meet this man by the name of uh, John Harkanus, okay? Which uh, forced Edomites to degree to become so called, take on the, the, the so called Israel or the Israeli or the Israelite customs. But even then, you had converts later, okay, that took it upon themselves to, 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 to keep our law, statutes, and commandments because they needed it. Even though this was before then, but even then, during the time of the Belfort Declaration, which is in the 1900s, okay, they were implanted in that land. But see, that was all propagated through lies and history and, and covering up of, of, of history, man. Okay, and it says here, and were incorporated into the Jewish nation, Edom. So they even telling you today that those Israelite or those Israelis, Salakia, not Israelites, but those Israelis in the land of Israel today are actually Edomites, man. Okay, they're not. Uh, uh, they're not. They're not Israel. They're not Israelites. They're actually Edomites. Okay. Uh, let me see another one here. Matter of fact, let's look this up. I thought I looked it up already. Yep, this is the Zondervan's, Zondervan's Bible Dictionary. All right, so this is the book of. Uh, 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 well, matter of fact, not even book. This is uh, the, the the Zondervan's Bible Dictionary. It says Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures. When you think of prophetic, pro means before to say or prophesy means to say before. OK, so prophetic events are usually talking about in the future. Like a lot of times Bible prophecy, which was written then, was written for our time today. OK, scholars can approve. They can agree on that. It says Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as a scene of great future judgments. OK, future judgments. Future judgments. The Most High have not destroyed them yet. Okay, Esau has done too much dirt in the earth, man. He hasn't been destroyed. Okay, and it says she is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from the Most High. You see what I'm saying? So that's the point of great future judgments, and that's why I asked you to break down Isaiah 34 and 5. Okay, what about Isaiah the 63rd chapter uh, when Yahweh Shai, who you ignorantly call Christ? comes back and destroy Edom. When have the son of the Most High ever, ever came back and to destroy Esau, man? When have he ever came and trampled the Ryan press? Because he didn't do it when he came on the scene the first time. That's the case he would have took down the Romans who you and Gree were Edomites. And guess what? The Romans today are Edomites. They're the so-called white people. Okay? You got Jakes that are Romans too. Okay? Roman citizenships like Paul. He had a Roman citizenship. You can say that we have Roman citizenships or American citizenships, okay? Because even Esau wasn't Roman, a Roman by ethnicity. He was a Roman based on the lands he conquered and based on his citizenship. Like, he's not an American. Esau is an Edomite. He just colonized the place and assumed the identity. Identity, so like you're going back to uh, uh, Psalms 49 and 11. But you even agreed that the Idumians or the Romans were Edomites, which are your so-called white people today. And what proves that you can go to uh, uh what is this the deuteronomy no i think it's i think it's deuteronomy the uh well leviticus the 13th chapter about the plague of leprosy and a scalp about the clean leper and an unclean leper 
it goes into the description of how your people will be. Like when the Most High cursed Miriam with a plague of leprosy, hey, they said she is one as the dead. And your name, Idumia or, or Esau, uh, uh, which means Isashia, which means wasted away as he, which pretty much means dead. So the Most High, man, you're not getting away from your judgment, bro. All right. So, uh, matter of fact, let's go here. Let's go to the book of Second Address 6. And this started verses Second Andrew six, and I'm gonna start at verses uh, seven. It says, "Then answer I and said, What should be the parting a son of times, or when shall the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth?" And he said unto me, "From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau." For Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it, man. Okay, so if Esau is the end of the world, how in the hell is he done away with? Okay, if he's the end of the world, how is he done away with? Break that down. And this is the reason why you would never go into the Apocrypha because you know that the Apocrypha cuts you. Okay, even when it goes into uh, 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 the Maccabean Wars, when it goes into the, 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 the dynasty of, of, of Antiochus. Okay, it even tells you about Alexander. So ain't no way in hell that this line has been totally decimated. No, the scriptures say that you're still here today. Okay, it says Jacob is the beginning of the world. And Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth it. So it's telling you that your people was going to be in perpetual rulership at the time of the end, which we're currently living in now. Okay, just wanted to put that out there. Another precept. Uh, matter of fact, let's go to... Psalms Let's go to Psalms 130 Yep Let's go to Psalms 137 And I'm going to start at 7 It says remember O Lord the children of Edom Okay why did it say remember the children of Edom In the day of Jerusalem who said raise it raise it even to the foundation thereof O daughter of Babylon. Wait a minute. Why did the scriptures refer to Esau as the daughter of Babylon? And we are in Babylon the great, the daughter of Babylon, which is America. Then that means that your people were synonymous with Babylon. So how are, how are they done away with? It says, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. Happy shall be he that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall be he that taketh the dash of thy little ones against the stone. Now, if you look at your bloody history, okay, of the transatlantic slave trade the gladiators etc you know when we were put in arenas where our, ki our children was were killed and massacred beheaded even in this modern day when you had us in captivity hardcore bondage <laughs> your 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 edomite devils your forefathers they literally decimated our children they literally snatched the kids or the babies out of the woman's womb and stepped on their heads smashed them against the rocks man beat jake until his rod fall off he used to nail us into beds and trees and beat us till our rods fell off Okay, so why is it equating that vengeance unto you the same way if you were if you were done away with? You see what I'm saying? So no, you're going off, bro, and you know it. All right, so let's do one more uh, analysis, man. The point is being proven. History itself proves that this devil uh, is still around today. Okay, so let's look at Petra. Petra. Uh, Petra Jordan. Now, let's do some images. Now, look at this, right? This is how you build your coliseum. This is how you build your buildings. Okay? And you say nobody here. But, I mean, you got people that visit this place. Okay? Esau come here all the time and he feels right at home. And this is just a small depiction. And on top of that, you built your buildings high. Okay? That's why it says the clefts of the rocks. Now, when you look at downtown Chicago or Casey, wherever you want to go in the United States or even Shanghai, wherever city you go... That you've established your shithole, man. You build tall skyscrapers. Everything is a concrete jungle. Why is that? Because it's reminiscent of this. That's why it's concrete every damn way. This is why you built skyscrapers, man. This is why you built 40, 50 story tall buildings. Because this is a remnant of you. You you were used to being in them damn caves, man. Okay. Now let's look up Petra Jordan versus uh Wall Street. 
see the, see the comparators. See if they give us some type of comparative analysis. Okay. So peep that, right? These are the way you used to build your buildings. Now peep this. Stock exchange. Look at this. <laughs> Looks the same to me, buddy. You build buildings like this when you were Greece, when you were the Greeks, and when you were the Romans. You see? So, there you go, vocab. Ain't no way, ain't no way of getting around this, man. Look at this. New York stock market, a stock exchange. You built the buildings the same exact way. All right. Uh, let's do some Roman... Roman Colosseum versus modern stadiums. And guess what? This was you, man. And they even stated, like, if you look up the old United Center back in Chicago, they said that they modeled that after a particular building in ancient Rome, man. Okay? So it's the same concept. Colosseum versus 21st century uh, amphitheaters, man. Okay, it's built the same goddamn way. It's just modern day now, man. That's why the scriptures say there's nothing new under the sun. Yep, yep. So anyway, man, I'm going to end it there. Giving all praises and glory and honor that is due to you. How about Shimmy? How was shy? Double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone. Blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect. And with that, Shalom. And a bubble ball.